Hey, hi, and howdy, sweet friends. Welcome back to my channel, and welcome if you are new. My name is Courtney, and I do food and kitchen content here on YouTube. That means weekly grocery hauls and these What's for Dinner style videos, plus some other cooking-related videos that I sprinkle in throughout the year. So if you like that kind of content, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and stick around. Also, drop me a comment down below to say hi. Uh, I'm behind on responding to my comments right now, but I am about to start working on those this weekend, so I will get caught up. All right, this week I did my meal prep as I have been doing. I've got three meals. This is a short video because these are so easy to make, y'all. They're very, very budget friendly and very simple to make, and they are fantastic. So, we're going to start off right now by cooking some chicken. So, I have some chicken tenders. I seasoned them on one side and put the seasoned side down in the skillet with a little bit of olive oil. Now, I'm going to season the other side. I'm just using some salt and pepper garlic powder, onion powder, and some paprika. I tend to favor smoked paprika, but regular paprika works fine as well. Totally up to you. This is kind of just like a standard seasoning I use on chicken. It tastes amazing and it can kind of go a million different directions. It doesn't really like taste Mexican or Italian or anything like that. It just tastes really good. So this is what I'm using to get this chicken nice and seasoned. I'm browning it on both sides because color is flavor. You can see I got some really good color going there. This chicken was amazing. What's nice is I've got the heat cranked up, so it's getting a really good sear on the outside, but it's not overcooking the inside of the chicken breast, so it's nice and tender and juicy. It is not dried out. While that finishes cooking, I'm going to head over to my Ninja Foodie, and today we're going to pressure cook. So I have uh, some rice that I have put in there. I'm also adding in some French onion soup and then some water, which I'm adding this boy on in, so we'll have beef broth. So if you just wanted to do beef broth, that would be fine as well. I seasoned it with a little bit of garlic powder as well and some pepper, and then I added some butter and some Worcestershire sauce. We're going to throw in that chicken that I cooked. I went ahead and chopped it up, add it straight in there with everything else, and we're going to pressure cook this for just a couple of minutes. Rice does not take long in a pressure cooker. Four minutes with a natural release is perfect. This is going to be so flavorful and so delicious. It's like a French onion soup chicken and rice. Oh, it's just amazing. So while that's doing its thing, I'm going to work on this turkey tenderloin. Uh, I found a recipe for breaded turkey and tenderloin, which I will link down below. I'm linking recipes for everything down below so you guys can make these at home. I picked these turkey tenderloins up on sale. There's two in the pack, and I think they were around the $8 mark when I bought them. It's a ton of turkey, and this, oh my gosh, I could not believe how amazing this was. So these are the rotisserie seasoned turkey tenderloins. If you get the plain ones, the recipe I'm going to link actually has... Um, a recipe for the stuff that you would brush on the outside before you roll your turkey in the breadcrumbs. So don't worry if yours are not pre-seasoned. That is included in the recipe, and I'm sure it's absolutely delicious. These are just, like I said, the rotisserie seasoned chick or turkey tenderloins, and I'm just rolling them around in some plain breadcrumbs. Now, the recipe calls for uh, panko, which I was out of, and so I'm just using regular 99-cent breadcrumbs, nothing fancy. But oh my goodness, like I said, this was incredible. So I just made sure that the turkey was really well covered in the breadcrumbs um, and that I didn't see any plain spots or anything. Kind of made sure and packed it down in the nooks and crannies and stuff. And then I am going to go ahead and just uh, grab those two pieces of turkey and hold them while I dump out the excess breadcrumbs. And I'm just going to cook, cook the turkey straight in this dish. Now I will say I didn't spray it with nonstick spray. I would definitely do that. I had a couple of little bits that stuck a little. It wasn't bad. So next time I would definitely spray it so it doesn't stick at all. We're going to pop this in the oven and I cooked it at 350 for 45 minutes. These were melt in your mouth, tender and juicy, and the flavor was insane. Oh, it was just beautiful. I will definitely be making that again. All right, to get started on our last dish, we're going to make, uh, if you've never had stuffed cabbage rolls, this is just a casserole version because I had half a cabbage in my fridge and the leaves are cut at that point because it's only half a head of cabbage. So I couldn't make traditional cabbage rolls. So I found a recipe to just make it in a casserole style. And this turned out to be super quick, super easy, and super delicious. So I am using ground turkey instead of ground beef, which is what is traditional in this recipe. I got my ground turkey, by the way, for less than $2 a pound at Walmart. It was $1.98. Uh, I had to run in there the other day for something and I got some turkey season or taco season turkey and then regular turkey. 
it was a steal, y'all. So I'm using it in here, and my husband thought it was ground beef until I corrected him. I was like, no, dude, it's turkey. Uh, I'm going to start off by seasoning this with some uh, garlic powder and onion powder, some smoked paprika, and a little bit of pepper. I'm going to skip the salt on this one because I'm going to be adding some bouillon later for broth because uh, I don't keep broth on hand very often. I just usually use the powdered bouillon mix, which is quite salty. I went ahead and seasoned the turkey, and I'm just going to keep breaking it up until it's mostly cooked. You can see it's probably about 70% cooked at this point. It's crumbled nicely. Um, we're not done cooking, so I can just go ahead and call it at this point and move on to the next step, which is to add our cabbage. Like I said, I've got half a head of purple cabbage here. I just shredded it up with my knife. It took me maybe two minutes. Super simple to do. Uh, if you didn't want to do this, a bag of coleslaw mix would be perfectly fine. I know there's carrots in there, and that's okay, because in a little while, we need to sweeten this dish a bit, uh, and the carrots will do that for you. I'm adding in some other ingredients, and I'll give you my thoughts on that in just a second. I do want to give the cabbage a couple of minutes to cook, so I probably let this go on its own for about four minutes or so. I'm adding in some dried parsley, just because I like to add it to things I cook. I, I can't describe, uh, parsley doesn't have like a big flavor, but something about having it in there, I don't know if it's a visual treat or if I really do taste the difference. I just like adding it to my food. Fresh is even better, of course, but uh, if you're in a pinch or whatever, dried parsley is great. I use it all the time. I'm also throwing in some Worcestershire sauce because I love it. It's got this really deep, rich flavor. It brings a lot of notes to this dish. I think it's fabulous. And then we're going to add in some crushed tomatoes. Of course, you could use light tomato sauce or you could use diced tomatoes, but I like the texture of the crushed tomatoes. It's like um, a mix of uh, the tomato sauce with some chunky pieces in there, and I think that's perfect. Now, I'm using canned tomatoes, which can be a little bit bitter. Uh, something about the acidity of the tomatoes in the can, it does make them like a, a little bit harsh on the taste bud sometimes. So if you wanted to, you could totally add in some brown sugar, which I've done in the past before. Um, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I did add in a little bit, a little tiny four ounce can of tomato sauce as well. Uh, but again, you could do all tomato sauce if you wanted to, it's fine. I'm going to add in raisins in a minute, and those are going to be my sweetening agent, which is why I said it'd be fine if you wanted to use the coleslaw mix, because those carrots would be your sweetening agent. And they would just kind of like keep the harshness of the acidic tomatoes at bay. I also added in my bouillon powder there because like I said, we needed to have some broth in here. And then I added in a little bit of red wine vinegar for a little zip and zing. It is nice to have. Um, all these flavors sound like they contradict each other, but they actually come together beautifully and they just create a really well-rounded dish. There's those raisins I was talking about. This is the cheap box raisins from Walmart, nothing fancy. I actually think this came originally from like Maybe it was Ina Garten, the Barefoot Contessa. I can't remember, but I heard it might have been Martha Stewart. One of them does it with raisins, and I was like, okay, I'll try it. I tried it once, and it was amazing. So the recipe we're using today calls for already cooked rice. If you wanted to cook it all together, just add in the liquids with your cabbage and your meat mixture, and then throw in your uncooked rice and let it cook with everything else together. For me, I just cooked it in another pan on the stove. It takes about 20-ish minutes or so, maybe 15 and I'm just gonna stir it right in and it just really sucks up the rest of the liquids in that pot so that it's like a casserole, it's ready to go. Uh, this one, I don't put any cheese on or anything. I know some people like to, so if you wanted to, I personally think mozzarella would be a beautiful cheese to pair with this. Just top each one of your meal prep dishes with it so that when you reheat it, it melts. But again, I'm just serving them as is. So there is the French onion chicken and rice. This one is so flavorful and incredible. I will link the rice recipe down below and I just added chicken to it. Um, nothing fancy, but so simple, so budget friendly, and just a beautiful dish and quite classic this time of the year. Chicken and rice is such a great fall dish. There is the egg roll, or I'm sorry, the cabbage roll casserole. Uh, like I said, this one has beautiful flavors that are so well-rounded and you get different notes of savory and sweetness and just, oh, it's warm and it's like a hug in a bowl, really. It's so, so good. And with the turkey, we made it a little bit healthier plus cheaper. And finally, the turkey tenderloin. This was my favorite just because I had no idea that turkey was going to be as amazing as it was. I just paired it with some green beans. Nothing too fancy there, but quite delicious. You could also add some mac and cheese if you wanted to in there. that make a great dish. Anyway, y'all, that is what I made this week. Cheap, simple, but wonderful. These are all winners. I've linked all the recipes down below so you can make them at home. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hope you guys are having a fabulous weekend. I will see you guys back here on Tuesday for my grocery haul. Bye.